Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course analysis of variance and design of experiments. So, you can recall that in the last lecture, we had talked about the inter block analysis of variance. Now, we are going to conclude finally the analysis of incomplete block design in this lecture. So, now we are going to club 10 right from the beginning in this chapter in this lecture. So, this is very important for you that you remember the main results at least and then you try to understand what are the complications that are going to arise. So, as we had uh, discussed in the last lecture that uh, we had uh, found the interblock analysis estimate of the treatment effects and the earlier intra-block analysis estimate of treatment effects we had found earlier. So, now you have here two estimates of treatment effects. One here is from the intra block analysis and another is from the inter block analysis. Now, the first question comes here, you are interested only in the development of analysis or variance for the equality of the treatment effects. So, you need only here one estimate of the treatment effect. So, the question here is how are we going to join them together? What is the best possible way? So, for that I am simply going to use uh, or I am going to take some help from the statistical inference and then we will try to construct the estimator which is a which is expected to be a good combination of the intra and inter block estimate of the treatment effects. And based on that, we will try to develop the analysis of variance. But surely, now you can see that we are going into more complications. So, what I will do that in this lecture, I will try to give you the basic idea behind this recovery of interblock information. That means, you are trying to club the intra and interblock estimate of the treatment effects and then you are trying to conduct the analysis of variance. So, in this lecture, I will try to give you the basic methodology, philosophy, idea behind this and then after that from the next chapter, I will try to consider a particular type of incomplete block design which is balanced incomplete block design. And then that design will have a specific structure and then I will try to show you that how this interblock estimates, intra-block estimates can be obtained, can be combined together and how we are going to obtain the analysis of variance table. But definitely in order to obtain or to achieve that it is very important for you that first you try to understand what is really happening. Well, I am not saying that the, the, the analysis of variance table for this type of analysis of variance cannot be obtained, but surely that can be obtained, but that is going to be a little bit complicated and my idea here is to make you learn so that you understand how to do the things. So, that is why I will go in this particular way. So, now we begin our lecture now. So, if you remember what we had done in the last couple of lectures, we had considered the fixed effect model and then we had obtained the normal equations. We had removed the block effects and we had obtained the estimate of the treatment effects. 
that was called as an intra-block analysis. And in that you had obtained the reduced normal equation as q is equal to c tau. Now, you are saying that you are going to obtain the intra-block estimate of the treatment effect. So, that means from this equation q is equal to c tau, can you obtain the tau hat? Yes, why not? Tau hat is equal to c inverse q. But now, when I am saying C inverse, what type of inverse do you expect here? Unique inverse? In case if you are thinking unique inverse, then you have to think twice why you are saying that you can find out the unique inverse of the C matrix. Because you had proved earlier that the row and column sums in the C matrix, they are 0. So, that means the rank of the C matrix is going to be diminished at least by 1. So, obviously, as soon as the rank of the C matrix becomes lower than V, we cannot estimate all the V treatment effects. So, definitely in this case, we, uh, since the rank of the C matrix is not equal to V, at least that, that we are knowing. So, you cannot find out here the unique inverse, but you have to go for generalized inverse. So, now you will have here the generalized inverse of C and based on that you will try to find out the intra block estimate of the treatment effect. And then we had converted the fixed effect model into the mixed effect model where we considered the block effect to be random. And we assume that block effects are random, they are following a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma beta square. And then we had uh, transformed the model in terms of the block total. And based on that, uh, we had obtained the least square estimator of the tau and that was the interblock estimate of the treatment effects. So, this is how we have done up to now. So, now from this point we will move forward. We will consider the two estimators of tau and you will see that after uh, some time when we start the lecture then instead of considering the estimation of tau, we will consider the estimation of a linear function of tau, say I will transpose tau. And now if you try to remember in the initial lecture when we talked about the basic concept of a vectors, matrices and Gauss-Markov theorem, then we had discussed that how are you going to estimate the linear parametric functions, which are going to be obtained just by replacing the parameter by its estimated value and they are going to give you a good value if you are trying to for example, use the Gauss-Markov setup. So, now instead of for considering here the estimation of the parameters, we will try to consider the estimation of the linear parametric function and then we will try to take the analysis forward. Now, you can ask me that why instead of considering the tau, we are trying to consider the linear parametric function of tau. So, that will be clear to you when we try to do this algebra that in case if you are trying to consider the linear parametric function, then the algebra is becoming simpler. And now you also know that when you are trying to conduct the test of hypothesis, your parameters are going to be stable only when they are in the form of linear contrast. So, that is why now all those things are coming here together. And if you have revised your earlier lectures and you remember all the concepts, it should not be difficult for you to understand this lecture. So, let us begin our lecture now. So, we are now going to talk about the recovery of interblock information in an incomplete block design in this lecture. 
So now, as I said, you had obtained earlier the reduced normal equation Q is equal to C tau. In this C matrix was not having a full rank V, but we had uh, seen that the rank is going to be deficient at least by one unit. So we can obtain here tau hat, which is equal to here C generalized inverse Q. Right, so now we have two different estimates of the treatment effects which are based on the intra block analysis and based on inter block analysis. The intra block estimates are tau hat is equal to C inverse Q and we are going to indicate the inter block estimate of the tau S tau tilde which is N transpose N whole inverse N transpose B minus G into E V 1 divided by B K. So, now instead of considering the two estimators of tau here, we try to consider the estimation of linear contrast of this treatment effects and we try to express this here, here as a capital L is equal to L transpose tau. Now, the question comes here how to estimate here L. So now in case if you go back to your uh, lectures, uh, then we had discussed that when we are trying to consider the setup of Gauss-Markov model and we are trying to use the least square principle, then the least square estimators are the best linear and y estimator of the parameter vector. So the best estimate of this linear parameter function L based on this intra block estimation can be obtained just by replacing the respective estimators. So, you are trying to consider here, say here L hat is equal to L transpose, which will, which will be your here tau hat, right. And similarly, you will try to consider another estimator which is based on the inter block analysis, right. So, so now you can say here very simply because the intra block and inter block estimates of tau, they are based on Gauss Markov model, they are obtained by least square principle because if you try to see when we consider the, um, the model in case of inter block analysis, we had considered the model in the framework of block totals and uh, we had obtained the estimate of tau by considering the normal equation of the form like x transpose x beta is equal to x transpose y. So, that was simply your least square principle. So, the best estimate of linear parametric function L based on the intra block estimation will be uh, say here L1 which is say here L transpose tau hat which is equal to here L transpose C generalized inverse Q. And Similarly, the best estimate of L based on the inter block estimation is simply here you try to replace tau by tau tilde. So, that I am trying to indicate by here L2. So, now L2 becomes here simply here L transpose tau tilde, which is based on the inter block analysis or inter block est estimator of tau. Now, if you try to substitute here the expression for tau tilde, you can get here this thing. And when, and when you are trying to bring this L transpose inside the bracket, you can see here the first term will appear here as a L transpose, N transpose, N whole inverse, N transpose B. And what about the second term here? You are going to get here L transpose E V 1. So, now you can see here because you are saying that uh, L is a contrast. So, this L transpose E V 1 will be equal to 0 because in, because in a contrast summation of L i will be equal to 0. So, now you get here an estimator here L 2 like this one and you can see here if you have not uh, assumed that, uh, that uh, the estimators are in the form of linear parametric function which are in the form of contrast, then the second term will appear. So, that was the reason as I told you earlier that instead of considering 
the estimation of tau, we try to consider here the estimation of the linear parametric function of tau, right. Now, first we try to find out the variances of L1 and L2. Why we are trying to do it? This reason will be clear to you very soon. But uh, at this moment, we are more interested in finding out the variance of L1 and variance of L2 and now you know how to obtain the, the variance from a linear parametric function estimator. Means, you try to replace tau by its estimator in the linear parametric function and uh, then you try to find out the variance. That we had discussed if you remember in the uh, first two lectures of the course that how to find out the mean, variance, etc. Uh, in the case of linear parametric functions. So, this variance of L1 will come out to be here simply here sigma square L transpose generalized inverse C L. And variance of L2 will come out to be sigma square F L transpose N transpose N whole inverse L. And now, we try to find out here the covariance between Q and B. But now, you have to remember here one thing. You have to be careful that there is going to be some confusion in the symbols and notations. We are interested in finding out the covariance between the adjusted treatment total which are obtained from the intra block analysis and the block totals which are obtained from the inter block analysis. You can recall that uh, you had indicated by Q and B as the adjusted treatment total and unadjusted block total in case of intra block analysis of variance. And uh, you also had proved that the covariance between Q and B in the case of intra block, this was coming out to be null vector. And that is how you had proved that the adjusted treatment total and the unadjusted block totals are orthogonal, they are independent. But now here there is a difference. We are interested in finding out the covariance between the Q from the intra block analysis and B from the inter block analysis, and that is what I am writing here. But yeah, because of the symbols and notation, there can be some confusion, that is why you have to be very careful here. So, now I can write down here like this that covariance between V minus N transpose K inverse B star and B. So, now because you have obtained the block totals in case of intra block analysis as well as in the inter block analysis. So, I am using here a symbol this here B star that is indicating the block totals based on intra block analysis and this here B that is going to indicate the block total based on inter block analysis. So, remember this is very important this B star is based on intra block analysis and this B is based on inter block analysis. And now, if you try to solve it here, this will come out to be as covariance between V and B minus covariance between N transpose K inverse B star and B. Now, in case if you try to see, we had obtained earlier and uh, similarly on the same lines, we can obtain here that the covariance between V and B will come out to be N transpose sigma F square. And about this thing, the covariance between N transpose K inverse B star and B, we can obtain it here as a N transpose K inverse K sigma F square. So, if you can see here, this is coming out to be 0. 
al vector. Right. But now once again I will say you have to be very cautious here that this result that covariance between q and b is equal to null vector that sometime is misleading to the students to the uh, to the extent that they try to think that this is possibly the same result what they have done earlier in the case of intra block analysis but this result is different from that result this is what i am trying to emphasize here again and again right so now, but you can see here that this, uh, these two quotals are independent. That is our main objective. Right. So that is what I have written here very clearly that we are using here two notation B and B star just to indicate that the two block totals are different. The reader should not misunderstand that it follows from the result covariance between Q and B is equal to zero that we have proved in the case of intra block analysis. Thus, now you can see here in this case you have obtained here the L1 and L2. So, so the covariance between an L1 and L2 will also become 0, whatever be the values of here L. Right. So, now the next question comes here that now you have got here a parameter tau of which you have considered the linear parametric function say here L. Then you have estimated tau by intra block analysis and by inter block analysis and based on that you have here the two estimators say here L1 and L2 where this L1 is equal to L transpose tau hat and L2 is equal to L transpose tau tilde. Right. So, now the question here is this you want only one estimator of L transpose tau. So, the question here is now given two estimator tau hat and tau tilde of tau how to combine them and obtain a minimum variance and by estimator of tau. Right. So, now I try to take here a simple exercise. Now, I am taking here a break from this analysis and I am just trying to take an independent example right? that is not related to any one of the concept that we have done up to now. right? No intra block analysis, no inter block analysis, but just try to take a very simple example from the statistical inference. So, suppose I consider that there are two estimators say phi 1 hat and phi 2 hat of a parameter phi. Right. And suppose both uh, the estimators are unbiased estimators of phi. So, that means expected value of phi 1 hat is equal to phi and expected value of phi 2 hat is equal to here phi. And suppose the variance of uh, phi 1 hat is sigma 1 is square and variance of phi 2 hat is sigma 2 is square. Now, we want to find out here a minimum variance and by estimator of phi. So, we consider here a linear combination of uh, these two estimator as theta 1 phi 1 hat plus theta 2 phi 2 hat, where theta 1 and theta 2 are the weights which are given to phi 1 hat and phi 2 hats. And now, we want uh, that uh, And we want here an estimator of phi as phi hat, which is an unbiased estimator of phi. So, we want here expected value of phi hat is equal to phi and so, this uh, will become here theta 1 into expected value of phi 1 hat plus theta 2 into expected value of phi 2 hat which is equal to here phi. 
So, now we have assumed that both the phi 1 hat and phi 2 hat they are the unbiased matrix of the parameter phi. So, expected value of phi 1 hat will become here phi, expected value of phi 2 hat will become here phi and this is equal to here phi and this gives us a condition that theta 1 plus theta 2 should be equal to 1. So, what we try to do? So, so we try to modify our phi hat as a uh, theta 1 uh, uh, phi 1 hat plus the theta 2 phi 2 hat divided by theta 1 plus theta 2, which is actually simply the weighted arithmetic mean of phi 1 hat and phi 2 hat. And so, now in case if you assume that uh, suppose phi 1 hat and phi 2 hat they are independent of each other. Then in that case you can find out the variance of phi hat here as say theta 1 square sigma 1 square plus theta 2 square sigma 2 square plus the covariance term will become 0 here. So, now my question is this what should be the value of theta 1 and theta 2 such that variance of this phi hat is minimum such that theta 1 plus theta 2 is equal to 1. because that is a condition for the unbiasedness. So, now what we can do? We can partially differentiate uh, this variance of phi hat with respect to theta 1 put it equal to 0 and the solve it and this will give you here a condition like theta 1 upon theta 2 is equal to sigma 2 square upon sigma 1 square which is indicating that the weights are inversely proportional to the variance of the estimator. Right. So, the weight which is to be given to phi 1 hat say here theta 1 that has to be going to be inversely proportional to the variance of phi 1 hat. Right. So, now you have got an idea that how you can combine it means if you do not want to follow this approach the alternative approach is that you can simply use the Lagrangian uh, function and you can uh, construct the Lagrangian function with the Lagrangian multiplier which say here lambda star and then the Lagrangian function will become here say here phi is equal to variance of phi hat minus lambda star theta 1 plus theta 2 minus 1 and then if you try to differentiate here phi with respect to theta 1 with respect to theta 2 and with respect to lambda star put it equal to 0 and solve it you will get here the same result that theta 1 upon theta 2 is equal to sigma 2 square upon sigma 1 square there is no issue. So, you can choose any one of them and that is not the problem of the design of experiment, but that is related to the statistical inference. So, now I try to take the help from this from this exercise and we try to consider the estimation of tau the treatment effects and we try to consider that there is a linear parametric function L transpose tau, which can be estimated by intra block and analysis estimator L transpose tau hat or the inter block estimator say L transpose tilde hat. And now we want to combine it together. So, we can consider the weighted arithmetic mean of L1 and L2, which are the intra and inter block estimate of the linear parametric function L. Now, we want to obtain here the minimum variance and by estimator of here tau. So, we try to uh, consider these two symmetry and you do and you already have proved that the covariance between L1 and L2 is equal to 0. So, that means both the estimators are going to be independent. So, you can consider that this L 1 is something like which you have considered here phi 1 hat and and L 2 is something like phi 2 hat what you have considered in this exercise. So, now we have obtained that if you want to know the weights to be assigned to both the estimators in constructing the weighted arithmetic mean then the weights are going to be something like theta 1 upon theta 2 which is equal to variance of L 2 upon variance of L 1. So, we are assuming here that theta 1 is the weight that is going to be given to L 1 and theta 2 is the weight which is going to be given to L 2. Right. So, that the weights are going to be chosen such that they are 
reciprocal or inversely proportional to the variance of the respective estimators and whatever would be the values of L that we are not bothered. So, that is why you can now recall that we have found the variance of L1 and variance of L2. So, now we try to consider the weighted arithmetic mean of L1 and L2 with weights theta1 and theta2 respectively as theta1 L1 plus theta2 L2 divided by theta1 plus theta2 and we try to indicate this estimator as here say tau star. So, now you can see here you have here one parameter tau, this has one parameter tau hat based on intra block, then another here is tau tilde based on inter block and third estimator which is based on their combination which is here tau star. So, now if you simply try to substitute here the values of L1, L2, you get here this thing, right. And now this theta1 and theta2, they are going to be obtained as 1 upon variance of L1 and 1 upon variance of L2. So, I can write down here theta and inverse to be here like this L transpose L transpose C generalized inverse L sigma square and theta 2 inverse is going to be L transpose N transpose N whole inverse L sigma F square, right. Now, you can also consider a linear contrast based on this new estimator tau star. So, that we consider here say L star is equal to L transpose tau star and we try to find out the variance of this L star. So, you can see here this will come out to be theta 1 square variance of L 1 plus theta 2 square into variance of L 2 divided by theta 1 plus theta 2 whole square into L transpose n and the covariance uh, term will become 0 because covariance between L 1 and L 2 is 0 that you already have found. So, if you try to simply solve it you will uh, get here see here L transpose L upon theta 1 plus theta 2. Right. So, now in case if you try to see here what are you going if you try to see here what is exactly happening theta 1 is square upon say theta 1 some constant proportionality then theta 2 square upon theta 2 constant of proportionality divided by theta 1 plus theta 2. Right. So, in case if you try to put this constant of proportionality then we are trying to ignore it and then actually that get cancelled out. So, you need not to hurry for that thing. Right. So, this will come out to be here like this. So, now we have obtained here the variances of the three linear parametric uh, function estimators of tau. Right. Now, if you try to see, in case if you want to know the value of tau star here, you can see here in this light. So, if you try to see here this estimator tau star, this depends on theta 1 and theta 2 and theta 1 and theta 2 they depend on sigma square and sigma f square. So, now in case if uh, sigma square and sigma f square are known then you can obtain theta 1 and theta 2 and then based on that you can obtain here the tau star estimator and can find out its variance also. But in case if theta 1 and theta 2 are not known, that means in case if you do not know the value of uh, sigma square and uh, sigma f square, then what are you going to do? So, this theta 1 and theta 2 they are going to be known to us only if sigma square and sigma f square are known and if you try to see sigma f square is a function of sigma square and sigma beta square. So, finally, I can conclude that theta 1 and theta 2 are known only if sigma square and sigma beta square are known to us. So, the tau star can be obtained only when sigma square and sigma beta square both are known. 
and in case if they are unknown now what to do one possible option is that we can estimate them and we can use their estimator in their places so the next question comes now automatically that uh, how are you going to obtain such estimators right so i hope i have made it clear that uh, the estimator tau star is going to be known to us only when sigma square and sigma beta square are known then from there we can obtain the weights theta 1 and theta 2 and in case uh, if they are uh, unknown to us then one option is that we can replace sigma square and sigma beta square by their estimators and then we can um, obtain uh, the estimated value of theta 1 and theta 2 and then we can construct our estimators. So, now the question here is this how to find out the estimates of sigma square and sigma beta square. So, now one such approach is that uh, we can use the results from the intra block analysis and inter block analysis together. So, we try to estimate uh, first uh, the quantity sigma square from the intra block analysis. So, you can recall that when we had uh, constructed the analysis of variance table that that time we had discussed that an unbiased estimator of sigma square is going to be obtained by ms error that is the mean square error which is sum of squares due to error divided by the degrees of freedom. So, we had obtained that expected value of s s error this is equal to here n minus b minus v plus 1 times sigma square. So, and n by estimator of sigma square here it obtained here like this. So, now I am indicating by here error t inside the parenthesis. So, now we have to now obtain the uh, and, and by estimator of the sigma beta square using the following result which is based on the intra block analysis. Now, we have to see how are we going to handle it. Right. Now, if you try to recall in the case of intra block analysis we had obtained the sum of square due to treatment which uh, in case of unadjustment that means the usual the classical treatment sum of square that we had called as sum of square due to treatment which is unadjusted or the unadjusted treatment sum of square that was obtained here like this and adjusted treatment sum of square was here obtained like this summation over j q j tau j hat. And similarly, we had obtained the sum of square due to block which is unadjusted that is unadjusted sum of square due to block by here this quantity summation over i b i square upon k i minus the g square upon n and yeah the sum of square due to total was obtained by the same expression. Now, do you remember that in the case of incomplete block analysis of variance under the intra block analysis we had obtained the result that the sum of a square due to total that is the total sum of a square can be partitioned into sum of a square due to treatment and sum of a square due to block such that one of them is going to be adjusted and another is going to be unadjusted and plus s s error. So, now we have here two options that sum of square due to total can be expressed as sum of square due to treatment adjusted plus sum of square due to block unadjusted plus sum of square due to error or we can interchange the adjusted and unadjusted sum of squares. So, we can also express SS uh, total as sum of, sum of square due to treatment unadjusted plus sum of square due to block adjusted plus SS error. So, now in case if you try to consider this part. So, you can write down here that sum of square due to block which is adjusted 
that is the adjusted sum of square due to block can be written as adjusted treatment sum of squares plus unadjusted block sum of squares minus unadjusted treatment sum of squares. Now, using this result, we can find an unbiased estimator of the sigma beta square. So, now this under this inter block analysis model, we can write down here that uh, expected value of SS block adjusted is equal to expected value of SS treatment adjusted plus SS block unadjusted uh, expectation minus expected value of SS treatment unadjusted. So, and in case if you try to obtain here the expectation of adjusted blocks sum of squares, this will come out to be here V minus 1 sigma square plus N minus V times sigma beta square. Now, you need to obtain here an unbiased meter of sigma beta square. Well, I am not giving you here the proof that you can obtain earlier and uh, that you can actually obtain uh, yourself and we, because we have obtained so many such uh, derivations earlier uh, expected value of sum of square due to block, treatment, SSE, etc. So, that is exactly on the same lines. So, now what we try to do here because we already have obtained an unbiased meter of sigma square. So, we try to bring this over here and we can write down here that SS block adjusted minus B minus 1 into sigma square hat which is SS error T divided by the degree of freedom and minus B minus V plus 1 this is equal to n minus v times sigma beta square. So, now you can see here you can bring this n minus v here and one can write here very easily that an unbiased meter of sigma beta square that is sigma is beta square hat is equal to 1 upon n minus v sum of square due to block adjusted that is adjusted sum of squares due to blocks minus B minus 1 upon N minus B minus V plus 1 into SS error T. So, now you can see here now you have obtained an unbiased meter of uh, sigma square sigma square as well as sigma beta square that you have now obtained. So, now what you have to do? In case if you want to obtain here the estimator tau star and suppose theta 1 and theta 2 are going to be unknown to us, then we are going to replace sigma square by sigma square hat and sigma beta square by sigma beta square hat in theta 1 and theta 2. And then you will obtain here quantities like theta 1 hat, theta 2 hat and then try to use this theta 1 hat and theta 2 hat in the tau star. And this will be a sort of estimator which is combining the information on intra block and inter block estimate of treatment effects. But surely, when you are trying to look at tau star, the tau star was obtained assuming that uh, the weights theta 1 and theta 2 are known to us. But when you are trying to replace theta 1 and theta 2 by their unbiased estimators. So, now this theta 1 hat and theta 2 hat they are also random variables. So, the properties of the tau star they are going to be changed. 
right. So now, what will happen that you have to think? Once you are trying to write down the function tau star as a function of sigma square hat and sigma square beta hat and you are also trying to consider here tau 1 hat and and say tau tilde then you can imagine that the structure of tau star is going to be complicated and finding out the exact distribution of this new form of tau star will be difficult right so what we try to do here that first we try to estimate the weight theta 1 and theta 2 by replacing sigma square and sigma beta square by sigma square hat and sigma square beta hat respectively and then the estimate of theta 1 and theta 2 can be obtained by replacing by their estimates and can be used in place of tau star. But you have to note that the exact distribution of the associated sum of squares due to treatment is now difficult to find when sigma square and sigma beta square are replaced by sigma square hat and sigma beta square hat respectively in tau star. That is difficult. So, now in case if you want to go further with this analysis, some approximate uh, results are available, they are possible and uh, we will try to take up uh, that how we are going forward when we try to consider the balance in complete block design because now you can see the things are becoming too complicated, but without them you cannot solve it, they are the solution. And since you have not considered here any particular structure of the design, so one can give here the statements, the expressions, but they may be difficult to understand. So that is why I will try to do this uh, recovery of interblock information or I will try to apply it when we try to consider the balance in complete block design that is our uh, topic in the next chapter from the next lecture. But in this case, if you have done so, if you have obtained the, the feasible version of the tau star and then based on that uh, one can conduct uh, the sort of analysis of variance also and if somebody wants to find out the increase in the precision using the inter block analysis as compared to the inter block analysis that can be measured by 1 upon variance of pool estimate that is your tau star or means tau star either by knowing theta 1, theta 2 or you are trying to estimate theta 1 and theta 2 divided by 1 upon uh, variance of intra block estimate minus 1. So, that will give you a sort of uh, means how much you are going to gain in efficiency when you are trying to use this uh, pool estimate instead of intra block estimate right. So, now what we have done here that uh, in case if I try to now conclude what we have done that uh, in the uh, inter block analysis the block effects are treated as a random variable which is appropriate if the blocks can be regarded as a random sample from a large population of blocks because you are going to associate a probability distribution you have assumed that beta i's they are coming from normal 0 sigma beta square. And then we have obtained the best estimate of the treatment effect from the intra block analysis and that is further improved by utilizing the information on the block totals. And after this since the treatments in different blocks are not all the same, so the difference be between the block total is expected to provide some information about the difference between the treatments.
and then the inter block estimates are obtained and then they are pooled with the intra block estimates of the treatment effects and we have obtained the combined estimate of tau that is the treatment effect. So, this whole procedure of obtaining the inter block estimates and then obtaining the pool estimates, this is called as recovery of inter block information. Right. So, okay. So, now we come to an end to this uh, lecture here and in this lecture you see we have combined many aspects together. If you try to recall, we started with the intra block analysis of variance. We had obtained an estimate of tau. Then we came to inter block analysis. Then we had obtained another estimate of tau. And now we are combining it together using the concept of weighted arithmetic mean and minimum variance and bias estimator. And in this weighted arithmetic mean, when we are trying to find out the weights, they are going to be dependent on the variances of the random error component and block effects. So, now in case if uh, they are unknown to us, which will usually happen in practice, one option is that we can replace these variances by their unbiased estimators. Once we have obtained those estimators, we can replace them in the weights and we can obtain the estimated weights. And once we have got the estimated weights, we can replace them in the pooled estimator and we can obtain a feasible version of the pooled estimator that is obtained by replacing essentially uh, sigma square by sigma square hat and sigma beta square by sigma beta square hat. And now based on that, if you try to find out the sum of squares, you can imagine that it is not so straightforward to find out the distribution of this sum of square due to treatment based on this pool estimator or the feasible version of the pool estimator. That is not the case as we have done earlier that uh, sum of square follows a chi square distribution and we had followed other rules. So, now we are here at the moment where we have understood what is this recovery of inter block information. We have understood the methodology. We have understood how are we going to utilize the intra block and inter block analysis to obtain the pool estimator and after that although we have not done, but we know what we have to do. We simply have to find out the sum of the square due to treatment using this new estimator and then we have to obtain the sum of the square due to block, treatment, uh, error, total, etc. and then we have to conduct the analysis of variance as simple as that. But now how to get it done? In order to illustrate it, we wait for some time. Now, I will try to take up the a particular type of incomplete block design which is called as balance incomplete block design where we have a particular structure and then I will try to illustrate how you can conduct this analysis and for that first I will try to show you the results of intra block analysis, inter block analysis and then I will try to combine it. So, now this gives you a very important task after, after the end of this lecture and this chapter that you have to be well versed with the intra block analysis, inter block analysis and this recovery of inter block information because we are going to use them directly in the case of balance and complete block design. So, you try to understand it, you try to practice it and I will see you in the next lecture till then, goodbye.